thankful for all of you who will be obedient to the Spirit. When God tells you to sing something, you sing it. He tells you to say something, you say it. He tells you to do something, you do it. That's important. It's crucial to the body of, of Christ that we are obedient. I want to go to the book of Romans in chapter 8. A lot of things that were said and even things that were sung this morning tie right in with the message. God's pretty good at doing that. Mm -hmm. The book of Romans in chapter 8. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and then we'll get into the scripture. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this place you've given us. I thank you, Lord, for this people that you've drawn together, that you have brought together, Lord. Lord, I thank you, God, that you've allowed me to be a part of this. Lord, I pray, God, now as we look into your word, that you would take this flesh, use it for your intended purpose. Lord, I pray, God, that you would make the thoughts of my mind plain and the words of my mouth clear. God, that you would open the hearts and the minds of the ears to receive that that you would have them to receive. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Book of Romans, chapter 8, I want to begin at verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. God never said we wouldn't go through things. I want you to really hear that. He never said things wouldn't happen. He never said you wouldn't have a hard time. He never said you wouldn't have a bad time. He never said you wouldn't suffer some things. But what he said was, though we go through these things, who or what can separate us from the love of God? He's talking about Christians. He's talking about the children of God. And he said they're going to go through tribulation, distress, <laughs> persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword. He said, uh, we're going to be more than conquerors through these things. I know a lot of time when you're in the midst of it, you don't feel like a conqueror. I know a lot of time when things are going bad, you don't feel like a conqueror. I know a lot of time when it's hard and when it's rough and you don't know where to turn and you don't know what to do, you don't feel like a conqueror. But he said, Paul wrote down here at the auction of the Holy Spirit, in all these things. That's right. Not just after you've gone through them. Not just when you're going through the good time. He said in these things, when you're in the midst of the persecution, in the midst of the peril, in the midst of the tribulation, in the midst of the trial, in the midst of the trouble. He said in these things, you are more than a conqueror through Christ. He said that there is nothing, not death, not life, not angels, not prince of power. L uh, listen, the sister said this morning that she had a visit from Satan. We get visited by Satan. We get visited by demons. The, the power of Satan is strong and he will come and he will come into your life. But in that, you are more than a conqueror. When he comes, there is nothing that can separate you from the love of Christ. Not one thing, not anything that this world can throw at you, that Satan can throw at you, that your flesh can throw at you. Nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. Amen. Nothing. And this is what I want you to really understand. The love of Christ is not a mushy-gushy, make eyes, get all fluttery-hearted love. It is a love that is action. It is a love that is shown. It is a love that is demonstrated. And I want you to get this and put this together before we go on. What he's saying here is nothing will separate you from what God is going to do in your life. The action he's going to take in your life. What he's going to be in your life. Nothing can take you away from that. You might have it hard. You might have it rough. You might have have to end up living in the gutter. I don't know what is in store for you in your life, but in the midst of all that, if you love him, if you serve him, if you give yourself to him, you are more than a conqueror, and you will accomplish what he has set 
for you to accomplish. And you probably think I'm going backwards, but this is the way God gave it to me. In that same chapter, verse 31, what shall we then say to these things? What shall we say to all these things? The tribulation, the trouble, the trial, the persecution, all the rough things we go through, all the issues we have to deal with. What shall we say about these things? What shall we say if God be for us? Who can be against us? If God be for us, we are going to conquer. It may not look like we've conquered in the eyes of the world. It may not even look to ourselves like we have conquered. When we begin to look at our situation, our circumstances, or how we have to live or the sickness or whatever it is we got to put up with it may not look like we have conquered but in the plan that God has set out for your life you are a conqueror God's plan for every child of God is not that they have a mansion on the hill and drive a Cadillac and have a big bank account and never have to suffer and never have any sickness that's not the plan that God has for every child of God your plan may be that you have to have it rough to achieve the purpose that God has set out for you. His plan for you may be that you get the house on the hill and all these other things. I don't know, but it doesn't matter whether it's the house on the hill or it's the shack down in the valley. That whatever God has planned for you, you can be a conqueror in that. That's right. Not just through that. I, this is important that we understand. He said, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Even when it looks dark, even when it looks dim, even when it looks rough, even when you don't know where to turn or what to do or what the answer is, in that, you are more than a conqueror through Christ. Amen. So what shall we say to these things? These things we got to deal with and put up with. The, the physical ailments, the financial problems, the spiritual attack, all the other things that we got to put up with. What shall we say? If God be for us, right. who can be against us? If God be for us, we are right where we're supposed to be. If God be for us, we are living the life we're supposed to live. If God be for us, though it may look in the eyes of the world, they may look to everybody else like we have failed. But if God be for us, who can be against us? Nobody can be victorious over a child of God. If that child of God is sold out to God, if that child of God trusts God, if that child of God believes God, nobody, no devil in hell, out of hell, anywhere else, no person in this world can be victorious over a child of God if that child of God is sold out. That's right. Situation and circumstance do not matter. We measure everything by what we can see. But those things do not matter. That's right. So what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Go back to verse 28 of that same chapter, chapter 8. And we know, we know, get it? We know that all things, everything, leaving nothing out, all things, Work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. If you love God, if you are sold out to God, if God has called you, whatever you're going through, if for a purpose, it is a good thing. Amen. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God and the ones that he has called. Everything you've gone through, everything you've dealt with, everything you're going to go through, everything you're going to deal with is for a purpose. If you love God, if you're sold out to God, if he has called you, it's all for a purpose. Everything you've gone through up to this point has brought you to where you are. Let me give you an example. I used to work construction. But so one day I fell off a roof. That was a good thing. <laughs> Probably a lot of you said, yeah, I wouldn't have been mine one to push you. <laughs> Why was that a good thing? Because had I not fallen off that roof, I wouldn't have found out a lot about a lot of other physical issues I had. I would have never went to college. I would have never went to college, so I would have never got the job that I got. Mm -hmm. yeah. God had a purpose. God had a plan. I got it easy, let me tell you. <laughs> and I'm sorry for those of you who got to work hard. I'm not bragging. God has been good to me. Yes. God has been extremely good to me. 
Not only did he give me this good job and put me in a place where I don't have to work hard and physically beat myself up like I know a lot of you have to, but he put me in an atheist factory where I can be a witness, where I can be a light, where I can shine. For those of you who probably all know, I work for a college, and that's an atheist factory. The kind of people I work around and work with, who better to give the word of God? Me falling off that roof put me there. God has a purpose. God has a plan. All things work together for good. I'll save it. I'm getting ahead of myself. But I want you to understand, you are here now because of what you've gone through before. That fellowship and that love and that joy and that peace you felt this morning, that moving of the spirit you felt this morning was because of what you went through up until this point that brought you to this place. This is what we really need to get. Everything has a purpose. Everything has a reason. It's to accomplish something for the kingdom. It's to accomplish something for Christ. And I know when it's rough and when it's hard and when it's, the trials are coming and you just feel beat up by the world and Satan is attacking you. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. But I want you to remember the word of God, the promises of God in all these things. In the midst of the worst of it, we are more than conquerors. And what can we say about all these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, I am in this because God wants me in this because it's going to achieve something. Because I know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them that he is called according to his purpose. It's all to bring glory and honor. It's all to lift up his name. It's all to accomplish the purposes of the kingdom. Go to the book of Genesis, chapter 37. Everybody knows about Joseph. We're going to use Joseph to try to get across what God wants me to give to you this morning. Here's Joseph and all of his brothers, and all of his brothers are jealous of him, and all of his brothers hate him. We're not going to read the whole story because most of you know it. Uh, there's a couple points that I want to hit in here. And he hasn't really done anything wrong. He hasn't really done anything bad. Yet he told them about his dreams and that made them jealous and upset and all that kind of stuff. But he really didn't do nothing to deserve what was going to happen to him. Here's his brothers, his family, those who are supposed to love him, those who are supposed to be for him, those who are supposed to care about him, and they want to kill him. So they take him. And in chapter 37, we're going to break into verse 18. So they had this plan. When they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Now therefore, now come, come now therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to do away with him. He had done nothing wrong. There's probably been people in your life who just wanted to get rid of you. I'm not saying physically kill you, but didn't want you around. Didn't want anything to do with you. Didn't want to put up with you, whatever the case may be. And you didn't do nothing to bring it on. But believe me and listen to me and listen to me good. There is a reason. There is a purpose. God doesn't make them people act like that. God didn't put it in their minds to kill him. We sang, I'm going to praise the Lord. There's a line in there that says he'll take my circumstances and work them for my good. He didn't put it in their mind to kill their brother, but he used that. The evil that befalls us, what Satan does to us, what people do to us. God doesn't make them do that, but he will take those situations and he will take those circumstances and he will craft them together and he will use them to bring about the purpose that he has intended for your life. Joseph would have accomplished nothing had they killed him. So God stepped in. Listen to this. It goes on, verse 21, And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. 
They wanted to kill him. They wanted to do away with him. But something happened. One of the brothers rose up and said, let us not kill him. So that's part of God's plan. They wanted to kill him. One rose up and said, let us not kill him. I, I'm going to be joking around. Just bear with me. It's same chapter 24. And they took him and they cast him into a pit. That was a good thing. Just like me falling off the roof was a good thing. I'm sure Joseph, down in the bottom of that pit, wasn't saying, man, I'm glad I'm here. This is a really good thing. <laughs> but for God's purpose, for God's plan, for what God wanted to accomplish, it was a good thing that he was in that pit. And, and it goes on. Same chapter 27. Let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. That was a good thing. To get sold into slavery was a good thing to accomplish the purpose that God had intended for Joseph to accomplish. Now I know, I know very well that when they took him and they threw him in the pit, he wasn't thinking it was a good thing. He's probably questioning God. He's probably wondering. He's probably crying his eyes out and begging to be delivered. But that wasn't a part of God's plan. When he was in that pit, he wasn't thinking, yes, this is a good thing because I know some good's going to come out of it. Yeehaw! He wasn't thinking that. And you don't think that when you're in the midst of the problem. But I can guarantee you, you read this. Through it all, he didn't lose his confidence in God. Right. He didn't lose his trust in God. Yes, questions will arise in your mind. And you will wonder. And you will try to figure it out. And all these other things. But don't lose your confidence in God. Remember the scriptures we talked about. All things work together for good. If God be for us, who can be against us? In the midst of all of this stuff in the pit, being sold into slavery, I am still more than a conqueror. Mm -hmm. Don't lose your faith. Don't lose your trust. Don't lose your confidence in God. No matter how black, no matter how dark, no matter how rough it is, don't lose your confidence in God. God has already promised you. I read it to you. If you got to go back and you got to read it every day, twice a day, five times a day, you go back and you read it. We are more than conquerors. In the midst of it, we are more than conquerors. And God is on our side. And if God is on our side, who can be victorious over us? Amen. This just come for God's intended purpose. We need to remind ourselves of these things. <clears throat> and I know in our lives, we've all had situations and circumstances. Listen to this. They wanted to kill him. There's people sitting here this morning, Satan wanted to kill you. There's people here that have survived heart attack. There's people here that have survived cancer. There's people here that have survived other diseases and accidents and things that have gone on. Satan would have liked nothing better than to take you out. But it was for God's purpose. It was for God's glory. It was for God's intention that you lived through it. Something rose up. Just like Reuben rose up and said, let's not kill him. Let's do something else. Satan couldn't kill you, so he tried to do some other thing. He tried to make your life miserable. He tried to make you sick. He tried to make you financially strapped. But it still didn't accomplish what he wanted to accomplish. It still accomplished what God wants to accomplish. Amen. So let us sell it to the Ishmaelites. So we all know the account. He was sold to the Ishmaelites. He was taken down into Egypt. He was sold to Potiphar, a very high man, right next to the Pharaoh. I mean, he was up there. He was a powerful man. He had all kind of control and power and everything else. And Joseph was sold to him. And Joseph went and became a servant in his house. And he got to a point where Potiphar trusted him enough that he turned everything over to Joseph. And Joseph was running his house. And Joseph is probably now saying, this is a good thing. I've got control. I've got power. I'm second only to Potiphar in this house. He has put everything in my hands. Everything is in my control. He is probably thinking this is good. Now we're going to go to what I said I'll wait. 
There's some of you sitting here, and at some point in your life, you found a church where you thought this is where I'm supposed to be. Things were good for a while. Things were really nice for a while. You had good friends, and you got along with people, and you got blessed. But then things began to turn for some reason. Not anything you did. You didn't do anything wrong. You were still the same person. You still acted the same way. Joseph did too, but Potiphar's wife came along and began to accuse him of things that weren't true and turn Potiphar against him. There are those of us here who at one time thought we were where God wanted us to be because things felt good and things were right and all this. But trouble arose. Contention arose. Problems arose. And we had to go. Same thing happened to Joseph. But it was all for a purpose. Had he stayed in Potiphar's house, he would have never accomplished what God intended for him to accomplish. He would have never been what God intended for him to be. Had you stayed in that place where you once were, you'd have never got what you got here this morning. You would never get what God has in store for you in this place. He had to get you out of there. Yes, it hurt. Yes, it was hard. Yes, it made you wonder. And you maybe had to wonder for a while out there not knowing what to do the same thing happened to Joseph listen in verse 39 what I just told you he was sold to Potiphar his master saw that the Lord was with him he turned everything over him and the Lord blessed the Egyptians house for Joseph's sake I like to think in some of the places where I used to go to church that I was a blessing to that church. I like to think that I did my part. I like to think that I worked for God and I was a benefit to that church. Just like Joseph was a benefit to Potiphar's house. But something happened. Potiphar's wife rose up and she began to accuse him and make problems and cause trouble. And something happened in that place where I once was. Or that place where you once was. And you had no choice but you had to go. And that's what happened to Joseph here. And again, I want you to understand this. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't because of anything you did. It was because God had a purpose and because God had a plan to bring you to something else, to somewhere else, to fulfill His ultimate purpose. Joseph was taken and he was thrown in prison. Now I want you to get this. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. Even gave him favor and decided to keep of the prison. But here's what I want you to get. Joseph was taken. He could have been thrown into any prison. But listen where he was put. He was put in the prison where the king's prisoners were kept. That was necessary. That was important because there had to be that contact with the king in order for Joseph to fulfill his purpose. Wherever you went, when you left that place, after all the problems and the turmoil and the trouble, it wasn't a nice place to be. Joseph wasn't down in prison going, this is a good thing. Because it wasn't. But even in the bad thing, Joseph found favor because the Lord was with him. God was still with him. God still bestowed mercy on him. God still loved him. God never left him. And he obtained favor. Even when you were out there, after all that turmoil and trouble, and you're wandering around and not knowing what to do or where to go, maybe you were feeling like you were in a prison. Maybe you were feeling like you just couldn't escape this horrible feeling and this sadness and, and all the things that all that brought on to you. But God was still with you. He was still merciful to you. He was still watching over you. You still had his favor. He had to bring you to that place to accomplish the ultimate goal. So it says he was taken, he was put into prison, but he was put in the kings, where the king's prisoners were kept. And we all know this account. So the king's baker and the king's butler ended up being thrown into prison. And come in contact with Joseph. And we on an account they had a dream. And Joseph interpreted their dream. And asked that when you get back there. When you get back you mention me. You, you tell them about me. And they promised that they would. And they ended up going back. And they forgot Joseph. How many people do you feel just forgotten about you? And just locked you out. You were so good to them. You were so kind to them. You did so much for them. But when you needed somebody they weren't there. All things work together for good. It's because God has a plan. It's because God has a purpose. We look at these people and we get mad, angry. Feelings that 
Christians shouldn't have begin to rise up and begin to dominate our minds. And if we allow that to happen, then we can mess things up and not be able to achieve what God has for us. It never says here once that Joseph got mad and he got angry and he stood up and stood in the corner and wouldn't do anything. He still went about being a witness for God. He still went about carrying himself as a child of God. He still went about being the same man that he was in the good time. He was that same man in the bad time. And that's how we have to be in order to accomplish the purposes that God has for us. Though they've hurt you, though they've done you wrong, though they've turned their back on you, though you didn't do anything wrong, you didn't do anything to deserve this, you didn't do anything to bring this on you, and they do all these things to you, you still have to carry yourself, you still have to present yourself, you still have to speak, act, walk, talk like a child of God. Joseph never quit. He never stopped acting like a child of God. He never quit being what God intended for him to be. And because he did, he was able eventually to accomplish the purpose that God had for him. There he was down there in the prison. Uh, now listen, I'm going to recap because I want to really make all this clear. There may have been those in your life who just wanted to get rid of you and didn't want nothing to do with you. That was God's plan. That was God's intended purpose. It was for a better end. It was for an end result. Then they have taken you and treated you in such a way that you felt like you were in that pit. Like you just felt like you couldn't get out of this hole. This sadness, this depression, these hard feelings, these rough feelings, the feelings that nobody cared. Maybe you felt like you were there. Maybe you're there now. Maybe you're in a pit now. If you are, I want you to remember this. You just get a hold of this and you understand it. It's for God's purpose. They tried to kill you. Satan tried to kill you. He tried to just take you out. God didn't allow that to happen. He did allow you to go into the pit. But in that pit, you are still more than a conqueror. It is still going to work together for good. It is still going to accomplish God's purpose. If we continue to be the children of God that we're supposed to be, if we love Him, it is going to happen. Maybe you got that point, And then you got out and you just stepped into something else. You sold into slavery. You felt like you were just pushed away and done away with and it don't seem like a good thing but then after that you get to a good place you get to Potiphar's house and everything's fine and everything's dandy and you get comfortable and you settle in and everybody has confidence in you and everything's nice and everything's good but then all of a sudden for no fault of yours for no reason that you've done but you don't deserve it again everything just goes bad and you're going again into another bad place but it's for God's purposes. All things work together for good. All things. I need to underscore that. Capital letters. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord. To them that are called according to His purpose. And we are a called people. We are a chosen people. He has called us out and separated us. We are a called people. And if we love Him and give ourselves to Him, all things work together for good to bring us to God's intended purpose. He went from Potiphar's house back into that bad place to a dark place, but eventually, and this didn't happen quickly. I think it was, I don't remember, but I think it was two years he was in the king's prison. Two years of languishing in prison, thinking he had been forgotten. Those guys promised they were going to remember him. Those guys promised they were going to mention him, and they never did. He's down there, and he's in the prison, and he's doubting, and he's wondering, why did they forget me? I was good to them. They promised me they would be good to me, and they have forgotten me. It wasn't quick. It wasn't fast, but he never gave up. Chapter 41, and I just looked down and saw it at the end of two full years of him being in the prison. Long, hard time. Wondering and doubting and questioning. But never stopped being an example of a child of God. Never stopped trusting God, believing in God, and loving God. Never stopped. And at the end of two full years, we know Pharaoh had the dream. And finally, the butler went and said, there was this man in prison who interpreted dreams for me, and it came true. <coughs> interpreted dreams toward the other guy, and it came true. He came out. He was brought out and brought before Pharaoh. 
And, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I've dreamed a dream. There's none that can interpret it. I've heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It's not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. He said, It's not in me. Never stop doubting God. Never stop trusting God. You know, there's a lot of us. It's in the flesh. It's in the human nature. It's in the Adam nature. That we had gone through everything that he went through. Uh, people wanting to kill us, throwing us in a pit, selling us into slavery, being falsely accused of thrown into prison, languishing in there for two years after somebody promised that they were going to remember you and bring you out. It would be easy to step up and say, I can do this for you, but were you going to give me? It would be easy to do that, but Joseph didn't do that. He never forgot God. He never forgot who it was that really had all the answers, that really could do it. He said, it's not in me. God shall do it. So he was brought out and he was brought before Pharaoh. And he interpreted the dream. And it goes on and says that Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this man in whom the Spirit of God is through everything he went through? Listen to me. A lot of time we act very ungodly. A lot of time we act very unchristlike, And we think we're justified in doing that because they treated me bad. Because I've been through this and I've been through that. And I had to put up with this and I had to put up with that. But not Joseph. And this is our example. And what did Pharaoh say? Can we find such a one of this in whom the Spirit of God is? Through everything that he went through, it was still evident that he was a child of God, that the Spirit of God indwelled him. Can we say that in our dark time, in our rough time, when we're in the pit, when we're sold into slavery, when we're falsely accused, when we're run out of town, when we're put into prison? Can somebody look at you and say, can we find another one like this in whom the Spirit of God dwells? Or do we get like, I'm not talking to them. I don't want anything to do with them. I'm not going to help them. They're getting what they deserve. We can't be that way. Through everything, we are more than conquerors. Through everything, God is with us. Through everything, we've got to present that. We are children of the Most High God. And in this thing, throw everything you can throw at me. Do whatever you can do to me. Just, just, just remember this. God is on my side. And if God be for me, who can be against me? You can try, but you cannot be victorious. You may think you're defeating me. You may think you're putting me down. You may think you threw me in the pit. You might think you sold me into slavery. You might think you put me in jail. Uh-uh. That was God's plan. He just used you to accomplish it. We've got to keep these things in our minds. We've got to carry ourselves in that fashion and in that manner and in all these things because there is a greater purpose. There is a greater good. I've been preaching for months, many, many, many months. God has a purpose for this church. God has a reason for this church's existence. He's got a job for us to do. He's got a greater purpose for us. Everything we've been through up to this point has prepared us to accomplish that purpose. And there may be more on the way. Some of you might end up in a pit. Some of you might end up sold into slavery. Some of you might end up being in the prison. Some of you might get in a real comfortable spot like he did in Potiphar's house. Don't get too comfortable. God has an ultimate purpose. All these things are for that purpose. It was as I was saying, some of us have been in other churches. Some of us have been hurt in other churches. Some of us have been misused in other churches, treated badly in other churches. Some of us went out there to wander around trying to find somewhere that we could call home, find somewhere where we felt we were fitting in, somewhere where we felt like we belonged. It was a long time we were out there wandering. Then finally we came here, and God put us together, and we're in the place that God wants us to be, but there's still further to go. Don't get comfortable just because you're here. Don't get comfortable just because the Spirit moves on us and blesses us, and we have the great fellowship and the love that we have. Hard times still lie ahead through tribulation, through persecution, through nakedness, through famine, through whatever else lies ahead. We are still more than conquerors. And we will reach the ultimate goal. We will reach the ultimate purpose. 
We've just got to keep these things in our hearts and in our minds and understand it's all for God's glory. It's all to bring about His plan, His purpose. All these things are for that. He interpreted Pharaoh's dream. Pharaoh said, now this is a godly man. Do they say that about us? I want them to say that about us. I want them to look at us and say, now there's a godly bunch of people. There's some people that love the Lord. I want them to say that about this local assembly, about this congregation, about Jefferson Church. Now there's a church that worships God. Now there's a church that preaches the word of God. Now there's a church that really serves God. That's who we need to be if we're going to accomplish his purpose. Pharaoh said, this is a godly man. And he took him and he set him over all of Egypt. He was second only to Pharaoh. He was second in power only to Pharaoh. They all had to listen to him. They all had to obey him. They all had to follow him because he was second only to Pharaoh. On this earth, in this flesh, we are second only to God. We are the mouthpiece. We are the voice of one crying in the wilderness. We are the ones he left here to proclaim the gospel. We are the ones he endued his power in. We are the ones the Holy Spirit inhabit. In this earth, we answer only to God. We don't answer to the government. We don't answer to the judicial system. We don't answer to the homosexual agenda. We don't answer to the abortion lobby. We answer to no one but God. We are second only to God in this world, just like Joseph was there. And they may not, a lot of the people probably didn't like it. That's a Hebrew. He was in jail. He tried to rape Potiphar's wife. And you're putting him over me? They didn't like it, but they had to listen. Now listen, there's going to be a lot they're going to say, Brian, I knew him when. I know what he's really all about. I know what he's like. But they've got to listen to the word of God. That's right. When the word of God comes forth from a child of God in power, in purity, it carries the spirit of the Holy Ghost with it. And it will make an impact whether they want to believe it, whether they want to admit it, whether they want to accept it. When the word of God goes forth, what does the Bible say? My word will not go forth and return void unto me. It will accomplish that that I have purpose for it to accomplish. If we are speaking in the power of the Holy Ghost, speaking the pure word of God, they're going to hear it. But before we get to that point, we may have to be in the pit. We may have to be around people who want to do away with us. We may be sold into slavery. We may end up in the prison. We may have to go through all of these dark things. But then Joseph got to this point. After everything he had been through, it brought him to this point where he is second only to Pharaoh. When he speaks, it's like Pharaoh speaking. The people have to obey him just as if Pharaoh said it. I want you to really get that and let it sink in. It's the same with the child of God. You are ministers of the Most High God. You are evangelists for the Most High God. You are the ones that he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. You are the ones to whom he said, go into the highways and the byways and compel them to come in. You are the ones that he gave that charge. Just like Pharaoh gave that charge to Joseph and said, you are only under me and they got to hear you. God has said to us, you are my mouthpiece on this earth. You are my children. You are my ministers. You are my evangelists. You carry my word and they are going to hear it. Now, anywhere along this line, Joseph could have messed with him on that. He could have got thrown in the pit and blamed God. Well, you threw me in the pit. I'm done. I was trying to be a nice guy. I was trying to be a good guy. I was trying to do this. I was trying to do that. You threw me in the pit, so I quit. Or we could have been sold into slavery and said, that's enough. I am done. Or he could have got a job in Potiphar's house. It was comfortable. It was nice. He could have gave him to Potiphar's wife. Mm -hmm. We've got to be careful that we don't lose our integrity. 
We've got to be careful that we don't lose our faith, that we don't lose our hope, that we don't lose our trust and stub up in the corner and act like a little baby. We've got to be careful. Satan will also come along and entice you with Potiphar's wife. Something you like, something you want, something that's pleasing to your eye, that's pleasing to your flesh. It could be any number of things depending on the person. It could be money, it could be fame, it could be power, whatever it is. But you've got to be careful not to give in to it. You got to do what Joseph did. Run. Run as fast as you can away from it. Because the longer you hang around, the more enticing it will get. He brought him through all these things and brought him to that point. Through it all, Joseph never lost his belief in God. He never lost his trust in God. Remember, it was down in that prison, that dark, dank prison, that God interpreted those dreams for him to give to those other two guys. So we know that through all this, he still trusted God. God still spoke to him. God was still there with him. The Bible even says that God showed him mercy, even in the prison. So I don't care what you're going through. You're never there alone. God is always there. It might be dark and you might not be able to see him. It may not feel like he is there. But we've got a promise. We've got a guarantee. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will go with you all the way. That's a guarantee from one who cannot lie. Remember that in the hard time, in the bad time, in the pit, in the prison, in the slavery, whatever it is, you remember that. He's there and you're more than a conqueror in that thing. It goes on. And he said he sent him second to Pharaoh. And it goes on, it says, And the famine was over all the face of the earth. And all the countries came into Egypt to Joseph to buy corn. Listen. The Bible says there's coming a day when there'll be a famine. Not a famine for bread. But a famine for the word of God. I believe we are fast approaching that day. Yeah, there's a lot of TV ministries. There's a lot of religious programming there's a lot of stuff you really listen to it how much of it is the pure word of god the unadulterated word of god just right out of there point blank the word of god there's not a lot of it out there they reinterpreted they misinterpreted it they translated they did this they did that i'm going to tell you something there's preachers out there that think they wrote the bible they even got their name on it we're in a famine just like there was a famine in Egypt, there's a famine in our country for the truth of the Word of God, the holiness of God, the righteousness of God. This Word, unadulterated, unmessed up, unconglomerated, plain and pure and simple and to the point, we are having a famine for this. Even those who will read it the way that it says it will twist it and turn it and reinterpret it and tell people, go have some fun and sin, God's all right with that. You can be a homosexual Christian. No, you can't. That's right. But that's the kind of stuff that's going on. We're having a famine. They're feeding them poison in lieu of bread. That's exactly what's happened. Just like there was a famine in Egypt, there's a famine in the United States of America. And people are going to begin to get to a point where I believe that's from the bottom of my heart. God is going to begin to shake things up. And people are going to begin to look around. And they're going to begin to wonder, where can I get the truth? Where can I get the real answers? Where can I really get fed when it gets dark and it gets hard and it gets rough? And uh, all these other things that they be presented aren't doing them any good. They're going to begin to wonder, where can I get what I really need? I know that there's an answer somewhere. The faith that spread out around the world that there was corn in Egypt. If we become the people of God that we're supposed to be, if we become the church that we're supposed to be, the word's going to get out. The word of God is preached over there. The love of God is shown over there. God's presence is there. The spirit moves there. And word will get out. And when people begin to question, and people begin to search, and people begin to wonder, they're going to say, I heard. I can get fed over there. And they're going to come looking. But not unless we are like Joseph was. Amen. All the time, everywhere. Right. Your witness and your testimony are not in here. Right. They are out there when you're going through it. Right. It's easy to be a Christian when everything's good. Yeah. It's hard to be one when you're in the pit. Yeah. It's hard to be one when you're in jail. 
It's hard to be one when you're falsely accused. And everybody believes it. That's right. It's hard. Mm -hmm. That's the most crucial time to present Christ. That's the most crucial time <laughs> to carry yourself as a child of God. Because it's through all that that they're going to see they never quit. They never backed down. They never gave up on their God. They continued to trust Him. And look where they are now. You can say anything you want to say. They've heard it all. And they don't believe anything they hear. They need to see God in action. That's what will get to them. That's what will win them. That's what will draw them. We've got a purpose, church. We have a purpose. And right down the road there somewhere. I don't know what else we got to go through before we get there. But we got to carry ourselves like Joseph. We got to be like he was. We got to trust God. We got to remember that if God is for us, those other things can never be victorious over us. We got to remember that through it all, in the midst of it all, in the prison, in the pit, wherever we are, we are more than conquerors. Because God is on our side. And all these things are for good. All these things, all those things Joseph went through were for the good of all those people who were starving and who needed that corn, who needed to be fed. You know who this was to save? The children of Israel. To sustain Israel. So God's people. You know what the church in this country needs corn. The church in this country needs fed. The church in this country is drying up. It's starving to death because of the things I've been talking about. They're not getting the pure word. They're not getting the truth. They're not getting a truly righteous and holy God presented to them. And they're starving to death. Just like it said, Jacob was up in their country away from Egypt. He was far away, but he said, I heard. There's corn in Egypt. Let's go to Egypt and get what we need. There are going to be people, Peg said it this morning, that there are people that go to this church because this is where I go to church. I don't really enjoy myself there. I don't really get anything. It's like they were. It's like Jacob and his sons were. They're way up here, but they're not getting anything. They're starving to death. They're drying up. They're losing what they did have, but they heard. We can get it down there. Mm -hmm. If we become Joseph, if we present ourselves this way through everything, everything that I've been talking about, if we are like that and present ourselves like that, there's coming a day when the word is going to go out and when those people begin to search, when they get hungry, when they know that they're starving to death and they're not getting the answer where they're at, they're not getting fed where they're at, the word is going to go out so you can get fed over there and they will come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just like happened here, that's what will happen. In chapter 42, Jacob saw there was corn in Egypt. And he said to his sons, why do you look one upon another? That's what's going to happen. The word will go out that you can get fed here. And they'll begin to look at one another. And, you, and I can just picture this. They're, they're just like, there's corn in Egypt. Nobody wants to say it. They just kind of look at each other, waiting for the other one to say it. And Jacob says to them, why you just sit there and look at each other? Have you ever been in that situation? You know what you want to be said, but you don't want to be the one that says it. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of that, too. I don't want to say we should go over there where they're at. Yeah. <laughs> but I know we should. But I don't want to be the one to say it. But somebody will rise up and say, why are you just sitting there looking at one another? You know if you want a fed, you've got to go there. Mm -hmm. You may think I, I'm weaving a fairy tale. You may think I, I'm making stuff up. This is what God has given me. And God does not lie. He has a purpose for us. We can be Joseph's. We can be those children of God that he will put in a position that can feed those who are starving. If we do it the way Joseph did it. If we never give up and we never quit and we remember God is on our side and we are more than conquerors. In the midst of the worst that Satan can do, God is on my side. You can't defeat me. I am more than a conqueror. This has come to accomplish God's purpose. We've got to remember these things in the hard times. 
and in the bad times. It says, Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, Why do you look one upon another? And he said, Behold, I have heard there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence, that we may live and not die. I believe that day is coming. I believe it's coming fairly quickly. When they're going to be out there starving to death and they're going to be looking for a source of food. And there's going to be somebody who's going to say, I heard you can get fed over there. And if you don't go there and get it, we're going to die. We're going to spiritually die. A lot of the church in this country, I hate to even call it church, but a lot of it in this country is dying. A lot of it is already dead. And a lot of it is quickly losing ground. But I do believe that God is going to shake things up. I believe before he finally pours out the end, he's going to give them another chance. He's going to let them know there is a place, if you want it, where you can get it. I believe he's going to let them know that. And he wants us to be one of those places. I'm not saying the only one. But I believe he wants us to be one of those places. He wants us to be that place in this area. That's why this church sits here. That's why this church left Hanover 43 years ago and bought this piece of ground and built this. That's why he drawed you from wherever he drawed you from and placed you in this body. That's why he's done everything that he has done because of that famine that's coming because he's going to need a people that got the corn to give to them that are dying. That's why we're here. And we need to be ready to accomplish this that he has purposed for us to accomplish. There's a lot more that I could say, but I believe God has given you what he wants you to have. There's one more thing I want to get to. When you go through all this stuff, and when it's bad, and when it's rough, and when it's hard, when people turn their back on you, when people treat you like dirt, and you didn't deserve it, and you didn't do anything, and you, you just can't understand why, and you question God, I want you to remember what Joseph said to his brothers. As for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. To bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. That's why it happened. That's why you went through it. That's why you had to put up with it. That's why they treated you that way. That's why they turned their backs on you. That's why you had to deal with everything you had to deal with. Because God made it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. And we can't hold a grudge. We got to love them. That's right. We got to love them. And it's hard sometimes mm -hmm. because a lot of them are snakes. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have been dealt treacherously with us. A lot of them have talked about us. A lot of them have brought false accusation against us. But we got to love them because Christ died for them. That's right. Listen to what he said. <clears throat> God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. <coughs> and he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. Everybody that treated you bad and treated you dirty and wiped their feet on you and talked about you and accused you and did all those mean, horrible, awful, rotten, despicable, evil things to you. Here's what God wants you to do. Nourish them. Mm -hmm. And their little ones. Comfort them. Speak kindly to them. That's what God wants you to do. That's what we have got to be. We have got to be a church that not only presents the truth of the Word of God and presents it in its purity and in its power, and when it's hard, we present it hard. And when it hurts, it hurts. And when it wounds, it wounds. But we've also got to be a church where love is evident, where mercy is evident, where kindness is evident. Where compassion is evident. No matter what you've done to me, no matter what you've said about me, no matter what you've accused me of, no matter what problems you've called me, I love you. And I care about you. And I want you to be nourished. That's who we got to be. This is who God is calling us to be. We love one another. It's evident. We talk about it a lot. And I, I am so grateful and so thankful. And we are so blessed to love and fellowship and all that we have here. We have to give this exact same thing to that person that treated you like dirt. To that person that falsely accused you. To that person that spread those rumors. To that person that turned their back on you. We've got to give them the same love.
because when we were undeserving, That's right. when we were dirty, rotten, no good for nothing, evil, despicable, full of all the evil that you can muster, Christ loved us. Mm -hmm. And he died for us. He showed us compassion. He showed us love. He showed us mercy. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've got to do. I do believe a lot of people here have been through some really hard things. I know some of your stories. I know some of the things you've been through. I know I don't know it all. I know there are those here that Satan tried to take out. Mm -hmm. I believe I'm one of them. He couldn't do it because God didn't let him. That's right. Amen. Well, because your doctor was good. That's right. Well, because you had the right medicine. That's right. Well, because you're strong and you just talked yourself into coming back. Mm -hmm. Because God had a purpose. That's right. And God had a plan. And God wouldn't let him take you out. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't let him take you out, but he let him throw you in the pit. Mm -hmm. But that was for God's purpose. Mm -hmm. He did not let him kill you, but he let him sell you into slavery. That was for God's purpose. He let you go somewhere and get comfortable for a while and begin to really care about people and love people and trust people, and then they did you dirty. Mm -hmm. That was for God's purpose. Mm -hmm. But Satan will use that to try to turn you against those people, but remember the end. We've got to be kind and nourish them mm -hmm. and comfort them and speak peace to them. Satan has put a lot of us in a lot of these places. Some of you may be in some of those places right now. Some of us may go into a pit tomorrow. Some of us may go into jail tomorrow. Some of us may have some hard, hard things to face before we reach that point that Joseph finally got to. But remember, in the midst of it all, we are more than conquerors. Because God called us. And God is on our side. And if God is for us, they can't be victorious over us. All of this is for good. In the end, it will be for good. I, I just came to my mind, the scripture. And I think of this often. For the joy that was set before him, Christ endured the cross. He wasn't hanging on the cross going, oh, joy, joy, joy. But he knew the end result. Right. When you're in the pit, you're not going to be going, this is a good thing. When you're in the jail, you're not going to be going, this is a good thing. But you look on ahead. You look over the hill. You look what lies beyond. It is a good thing. Where God wants to bring us and what God wants to do with us, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. That's it, I'll stop.